Hey, what's going on guys? So I've got a quick video for you today on what I think is one of the most important tips that I give a lot of my students, regardless of what level they're at. And I'm gonna use this $5 kids butterfly net that I got on Amazon to demonstrate my point. Stay tuned. One of the most common questions I get asked in a lot of my lessons or my clinics is how do I keep from popping the ball up? Or how do I get better control over the ball? That's a great question, especially at the beginner level. That's something that really has to be a priority. The problem is, is that when I ask my students, why are you popping the ball up? They seem to be addressing a lot of the wrong issues, or at least maybe not addressing what the main issue is. So I'm gonna get rid of the paddle for a second so this concept is a little bit easier to understand. So the first myth that I wanna bust is just kind of in the name of the mistake itself. So we call it popping the ball up, right? Which leads people to believe that this is a height issue, right? So we think we hit the ball too high and then it gets slammed by our opponents. The fact is, is height is not the problem, power level is the problem. Start to think of your pop-ups as going too far and not too high. So here would be an example. If I toss, this is a little bit easier to see than if I'm hitting, right? So if I toss one with not enough power, it goes short. If I toss one with the right amount of power, it goes where it's supposed to, into the kitchen. If I toss one with too much power, it goes past my target, which is the kitchen, and it ends up popped up and therefore my opponent slam it at me. So I've had several of my students practice this drill where I tell them without any practice or anything, I just tell them to stand in a spot and I say, okay, toss the ball into the basket, right? Seems pretty easy and we do it naturally. Now, here's where the problem comes in. Once we introduce this little guy here, once we introduce a paddle, that feel goes away because most people are under the assumption that we are hitting the ball, right? So we're running the paddle into the ball. When we, when we think of it that way, when we do it that way, there's not a lot of feel in our hands to start to judge how much power we're delivering into each shot. So we're gonna reframe what we're doing in pickleball from using our paddle to hit the ball to thinking about catching and throwing back. Okay, so let's get into exactly how we're gonna fix this problem now. To start off, you can see me on screen here showing you an example of the wrong way to do it. You can see I'm clearly taking the paddle back, which means that as the paddle enters into contact, it's usually gonna be a little bit more out of control than we'd like it to be. So this is where our net comes into play. Like I said before, rather than a hit, we want to start to think about a catch and a throw. And the net is going to take care of the catch portion for us. Specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to take that net, we're going to keep it slightly out in front of our body, and as the ball is coming, we're going to try to catch each ball. Our goal here is to get that net to the spot of the catch early before the ball gets there, and have it still and waiting for the ball. I call this beating the ball to the spot. You can see in my examples here on screen that I'm not having to make a lot of big last second adjustments or fast movements to make this catch. So now you can see that I'm trading out the net for a paddle. Basically, we're just gonna do the same thing we just did, just get a feel for it with the paddle in our hands. So the paddle is still waiting for the ball at the contact point, and when the ball gets there, we're just gonna allow the ball to tap off the paddle. We're not going to put any forward force back into the shot. So once we have this sensation for what it feels like to have the paddle still and quiet and waiting for the ball at contact, now we can start to build some swing back into it. The only difference you can see here is right as the ball is about to make contact with the paddle, rather than just letting it tap off, I'm going to add some upward and outward swing to get that ball up and over the net. So there's two ways we can start to think about controlling our power level now. 
The first would be we have our paddle still and we determine how much power we want to put into it by how quickly we accelerate the paddle from the contact point. The second way you can think about it, which you've probably heard coaches talk about before, would be the length of your follow through. Obviously, the longer the follow through, the more power you're going to put into a shot and vice versa. These two concepts are just different ways of saying the same thing. So if you accelerate the paddle faster at contact, you're going to end up with a longer follow through and therefore more power in your shot. So for the last part of this now, you can see me moving away from the kitchen line, doing a couple shots in the transition area, and then a couple shots back where you would be hitting uh, third shot drops from. The main thing to notice as you're watching this is the setup technique is not changing at all. I still have the paddle, finding the ball, waiting for it to arrive at contact. The only difference is as I move farther away from the kitchen line, my target gets farther away. And I'm going to make that power level adjustment by either accelerating out more or having a longer follow through, which we kind of you know, discussed are, are basically the same thing. I'm pretty convinced that this concept may be one of the most important fundamental things you can learn early on in your pickleball development. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how this concept is going to play an important role in the development of the 3-0 to 4-0 level player. And then in the video after that, we are going to learn how to use this skill to develop some weapons as a 4-0 plus player. As always, I really enjoy interacting with you guys, so drop your questions and comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in part two of this series. Thanks.